Do you guys get white balance and everything? Yes or no? Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Everybody give me a thumbs up if your audio is working. I could sing even. Great. I see everybody back there. Delicious. Thanks, everybody. Good afternoon. I wanted to take a few moments here to give a critical update on the wildfires that are affecting our state. Right now we have 15 wildfires, uh, varying degrees of size and, and dangerousness, but particularly here in Orange and Ulster counties, I'd like to give an update. Right now New York State is facing the largest wildfire since 2008. I've been in regular communication with an extraordinary leader we have here in Orange County, our county executive, Newhouse, who uh, unfortunately we've had a lot of experience working on disasters together, and yes, your team has always been so integrated with ours, and I'm so grateful for that. Uh, also working closely with County Executive Ulster County, Metzger. Uh, I want to share our current response right now. Most of the fires are, are contained, but we have a couple that still require our immediate attention. Uh, Ulster County, the White House fire reached between 600 and 700 acres. Reports are it's contained. We're watching it closely as the winds continue to pick up. But right now, our greatest concern is the Jennings Creek fire here in Orange County. It has spread to over 2,700 acres across the border, 5,000 if you include the acreage across the, the line with the New Jersey. So 5,000 acre fire. 2,700 acres of which are here in the state of New York. Neither of these fires are controlled or contained at this moment. 
Some of the residents have been voluntarily evacuated, but I want to emphasize that at this moment, no structures are currently under threat. Last night, we had a very difficult touch and go situation, but I thank God for the teams we had on the ground that created the fire line necessary to protect these individuals' homes. They work so hard. It's a beautiful community, and I cannot imagine the level of stress that the residents of this great area of our state are going through right now. Uh, we've mounted a comprehensive state response since Friday. DEC forest rangers are leading the firefighting effort supported by New York State park rangers. As I mentioned the park rangers, I have to mention something that just breaks my heart to have to say. We did lose an 18-year-old, a brand new young man who just had his whole life ahead of him. Dario Vasquez lost his life while trying to protect the lives of others. And we've extended our condolences to his family, but I'm sure that's a wound that'll take forever to heal. Reminds us of the dangerous work that these individuals do. When you look at the videos of the fires taken at close range on cell phones, it is frightening to see what individuals, and many are professionals, but also many are volunteer firefighters who come from over 47 companies across the state of New York. I just saw some from East Hampton uh, down the road, trying to support their brothers and sisters in uniform as we deal with these difficult, these difficult challenges. I also want to talk about our response right now. Uh, state police helicopters are doing water drops and drone surveillance. I witnessed that as I came in on a helicopter a short time ago. Right now we have two National Guard Blackhawk helicopters. Uh, we have been requested by the county executive to continue our efforts to drop the water, which is so essential. We're bringing in Chinook helicopters, which has greater capacity. We just have to rotate the teams in and out, but uh, we are there to the end. We also have state fire and emergency management coordination doing an amazing job. DOT heavy equipment is here, uh, as well as I mentioned, the local fire departments. We have over 377 heroes, people who left their security of their homes that are on the ground, and 66 of whom are state workers. And again, I've done a lot with our volunteer fire companies over the last couple months, just going out there, talking about how we're trying to invest in their training, trying to encourage more people to join the ranks. It is a family. And when something like this happens, the way they pull together and do everything from feed each other, look out for each other, whether they're in the station hearing their, their most recent directions and commands, or whether they're out there in a force that is scorching with fire, hard to breathe, uh, I am so in awe of all of them. And as the governor of this great state, I am forever grateful to all of them. The conditions we're facing are still pretty dire. This is one of the driest Octobers we've had on record. This has been a challenge for us because normally starting in September you see a lot more rainfall, the ground is saturated, and something like this would not have taken hold. We have not received enough rain. We had a little bit of rain over the last 48 hours, but not enough to extinguish the fires. And unfortunately, there's no significant rainfall predicted in the immediate forecast. We're actually currently under a drought watch, level two of five on our drought scale. This requires water conservation, asking all New Yorkers to participate, but not a cause for panic. But it's absolutely critical that New Yorkers avoid any outdoor burning at this time. We have announced, we've announcing today a statewide burn ban because the threats are too great and we cannot have our resources directed to smaller fires. We need everybody, all hands on deck on the major scale fires we have right here. So I'm asking everyone to comply with this uh, until further notice. What that means is completely avoid outdoor burning. Don't leave any campfires, which you should not have campfires in the first place. So don't leave them attended, but don't have them. Uh, exercise extreme caution with outdoor grills and report fires immediately. And again, as I said, start conserving water. Stay alert and monitor your local forecasts and law enforcement alerts. And we're hoping that cooler temperatures and higher humidity will help, help but here we are. We'd love to have no wind. The winds are going to reach 25 miles an hour today. And that is just going to create turmoil, chaos, and a lot of uncertainty that we don't, we don't need right now. Now, we're expecting that traditional weather conditions uh, that we expect this time of year and, and through the winter should provide some relief from the drought. But uh, we don't know how long this will last. This could be an atypical winter. So again, the conservation efforts we're asking everyone to undertake should continue for months. 
Again, I want to thank our first responders. I come here in person uh, through floods and uh, tornadoes, and unbelievably the same neighborhood that was affected with the fire had a, a tornado just this past year. And I want to thank all of them for stepping up and being there as we protect New Yorkers homes and their lives. It's our number one priority is keeping New Yorkers safe. With that, I'd like to introduce my incredible partner in government, County Executive Steve Newhouse. But I want to acknowledge, I forgot to acknowledge all the individuals here. When the noise stops, I'll... I want to acknowledge we have the mayor of Greenwood Lake here, also the supervisor, that's Thomas Howley, Supervisor Jesse Dwyer from Warwick. I want to thank him. This is one of the largest communities in the state of New York. It's important that we have strong leadership. He's brand new on the job, but he's doing a fantastic job. Uh, Commissioner Jackie Bray, the head of Dishes, our Department of Homeland Security. Randy Simon, our interim commissioner of Parks. Major General Ray Shields of the uh, National Guard. Major Michael Sunwick, Troop F Commander. Brian Gallagher, the New York State DEC Forest Ranger. He's on our incident command. Um, commander, I want to thank Brian Gallagher. Brian, where are you? Uh, right here, Brian, doing, let's, I'm so impressed with what you're doing, your command of knowledge, the way you've been directing these operations. I feel we are much safer because we've had you guiding our efforts here, and I want to thank you for that. Thank let's you. give him a round of applause. Brian Gallagher. <laughs> Assemblymember Carl Brabenek here. I want to thank our Assemblymember for joining us as well. And again, I want to list, list all the agencies. When you talk about a whole of government approach to solving problems, this is it. Uh, DEC, Homeland Security, State Police, Parks, uh, DMNA, and our Department of Transportation, all on hand and sending all the resources. We will not leave this crisis until we feel comfortable that everyone and every property is safe. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce County Executive Steve Newhouse. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. Um, it's great to have the governor here. Uh, we have a wonderful relationship. We work very closely. Jackie Bray, uh, her and I work uh, probably on a daily basis. Uh, the county's been supporting the state. Uh, Brian has been the incident commander. Uh, we kind of came involved even heavier uh, starting Saturday in the afternoon. Sunday was probably one of the most difficult situations I've never seen with the fire. The average uh, uh, volunteer firefighter working along with our law enforcement and the park rangers literally saved that whole Cliff Road area. The residents were wonderful. This would not be successful without the town supervisor, Jesse Dwyer, and the mayor, Tom Howley of Greenwood Lake, and their whole teams marrying with mine to make it happen. We obviously had that tragic uh, death of uh, Mr. Vasquez on Saturday night. Uh, our county was able to bring in the sheriff's office, grief counselors, along with our other mental health, our medical examiner's office, working with those teams to um, not only take care of Mr. Vasquez, but to also take care of his teammates. It is an emotional, emotional drain on our men and women that are on the front lines here, and it is inherently dangerous, dangerous work. Uh, we are making uh, grounds and we're making uh, headway with people on foot, with being supported by UAV operations, and thankfully General Shields, my good friend, is here, and those aviation assets are critical to our success here. We can't get to some of these places. We can't get bulldozers, excavators, and other heavy equipment to these areas. So we're depending on our men and women on foot, as well as our support from those air operations. So uh, we would not be able to do it, again, without working like a team. Many of the people I'm super proud of, my emergency management team, they're ex-cops, fire, military. We do this for, on a regular basis, and uh, we're happy that we're actually making some headway. You have to be there in person to see it. That's what the governor is doing with true leadership by showing up here, seeing exactly what we're dealing with here, and giving us the resource. So, Governor, I'm happy to have you here. Thank I'm going to turn it over to Jackie Bray, my friend, the commissioner. Thanks so much, County Executive. Thank you, Governor, as always, for, for showing up. It makes such a big difference. Um, this has been a historically dry fall. In fact, we had the driest October in New York City and in parts of the Hudson Valley that we've ever had in New York, of course, followed uh, from a historically wet summer. Um, we did receive some rain over the last 48 hours, less than half an inch. It just wasn't enough to 
to extinguish the flames. It wasn't enough to take us out of the drought that we're in. So I want to say the National Weather Service has issued red flag warnings um, for the following location. So this is New York City, Hudson Valley, um, Capital Region, all of Long Island, Montgomery. These are counties. Montgomery, Schenectady, Albany, Rensselaer, Schoharie, Green, Delaware, Columbia, Ulster, Sullivan, Dutchess, Orange, Putnam, Rockland, Westchester, all of New York City, and all of Long Island. What a red flag warning means to us is that the threat of fire increases. When you have a fire like this one, it means that the threat that the fire could spread increases on a red flag day. It means that temperatures are higher than normal. It means that humidity is lower than normal. And it means that the winds are going to be a factor, which is certainly what we're seeing, uh, what we really saw Friday night into Saturday and what we're going to we expect to see more of today. We've got wind gusts in the area of about 35 miles an hour today. Uh, our temperatures are in the 40s to 50s. That is high for this time of year in this area. And our humidity could dip uh, as low as 35. Um, I want to give New Yorkers directly some safety tips. Uh, number one, as the governor said, she announced a, a full burn ban in New York State beginning immediately, which means completely avoid outdoor burning. Um, you ex exercise extreme caution around grills. In New York City, the mayor has um, uh, suspended the use, has banned the use of any grills in the parks down there. Report fires immediately to local authorities. Um, and some things as the drought continues to conserve water. Do your loads of laundry when the laundry is full, right? Don't do half a load. Uh, wait until your dishwasher is full to run it. These things will really make a difference. Put off washing your car, put off watering the lawn, take shorter showers, turn off the faucets when we're brushing our teeth. We know how to do some of these things. I also um, just want to uh, give a little bit more depth on the burn ban. So um, while outside of New York City, barbecue grills, maple sugar arches, um, that sort of outdoor cooking advice, this does not apply to those. But obviously, we need New Yorkers to be careful with those. Um, campfires that are less than three feet in height um, are permitted, but we need you to have whatever you need to put that fire out immediately on hand, whether that's a fire blanket, sufficient water, that type of stuff. Um, uh, the on-site burning of agriculture waste continues to be permitted. Um, you know, the regular fire training and that type of stuff continues to be permitted. Uh, we will not be taking this um, uh, restriction likely, and we will be out uh, enforcing the burn ban across the state. To give a little bit of context, the, gover uh, the governor gave some. On an average year in New York State, we have about uh, 1,400 of acres that burn. Uh, in the last three days, this fire alone has burnt 2,700 acres, and just a second fire has burnt 700 acres. And so we are well, well, well above normal. Um, and with that, I'll just thank, you know, thank the first responders, uh, appreciate everyone, and then questions, right? All right, we're going to do on-topic questions only, um, if anybody has one. Yeah, Jennifer, you're going to answer in the back, whether you Well, part of it is making sure that our local county governments that are on the front lines of these wars have the resources they need. So we've been directly partnering with them to make sure that we're identifying the vulnerable spots, how we can help build resiliency. For example, on Long Island, we had a thousand year flooding event. Well, when we rebuild or rebuild in Highland Falls, that was devastated here in the Hudson Valley, thousand year flooding events. You know, we make sure we're not building back to the way it was. We're giving them the money for infrastructure to build the roads higher. And when you rebuild a home, you build the home higher if you're on a creek bed. So, and building, strengthening the culverts that have been compromised. And so it's all about, much of it is infrastructure. And as there are high costs for local, local governments, that's why the state is stepping up to assist, uh, as well as emergency preparedness, constant training from the state with our local government partners so they're aware of the latest technologies and ideas that we have to protect people once the event starts. So we are looking at it from every aspect, preventative, but also during the crisis, how you manage it. Again, a few years ago, we would not be employing drone technology to show us the hot spots 
that we can respond to, get the helicopters with the water there, start dropping before and saturating the land around it before the fire can spread. So, so we're taking advantage of all technologies as well and training. So if there's other ideas, we're always open to them. We want to make sure that New York State is first in the nation in terms of protecting our citizens. Again, we, the neighbor we just left saw the fire. That had been hit by a tornado not long ago. Think about that, a tornado and a fire. Hurricanes have come here, massive flooding. Now we have droughts, record snow. New York State had the highest snowfall just a couple of years ago, seven feet of snow where I come from in Buffalo. So I know about weather, but you don't know what to expect, so you prepare for the worst and hope for the best always. That's very true for our leadership team, but also those who are actually out there in harm's way. That's why we have 12-hour shifts, and I'm so grateful that we have fire companies from all over the state of New York that are rotating in to give them a break. Because you want to make sure you're at your best when you're out there, so your, your mind is sharp, you can make the decisions in a split second, because it could be a matter of life or death. So we're well aware of the dangers of exhaustion, and that's why we're asking, we have a respite area, we have, we have places that people can recharge, get some food, take a break, and have someone else go in their place for the duration of uh, a shift. So is there anything else to add to that? Yeah, yeah. The governor, uh, the governor activated the fire operations center uh, over the weekend. The fire operations center coordinates mutual aid centrally, uh, and so it's the state's responsible for making sure that there are fire companies from around the state that are showing up. Uh, and that's been very successful over the last couple of days, and we'll keep pulling. You know, if we've got a pull from Niagara, we'll pull from Niagara uh, to make sure that they've got the resources here. Sarah in the back. Sarah in the back. Yeah, you go ahead. Hi, Governor. Hi. Uh, we were with Dario Bassett's family yesterday, graduating high school, yeah. a car training. Can you talk about the training that was involved in the car training? Put them into these situations and talk about the fire. Uh, and again, broken hearts for this family and I cannot imagine as the mother of a son and daughter too you lose a child if you get them through high school and around the cusp of starting their career it is devastating so uh, you want to speak to the training? Yeah I could speak to the training our basic wildland firefighters get uh, what we call the uh, basic wildland fire suppression course and in that course it, we also talk about fire behavior and in fire behavior we got three things that will affect it it's basically the weather it's topography and fuels uh, that class is 40, 40 hours long. It's uh, 32 hours in a classroom setting and then a full day of working operations, learning the hand tools, learning how to pump water, and more importantly, identifying all the risks that are out there and how to mitigate those risks so we keep ourselves in, in a dangerous situation as safe as we can while still protecting lives and property. Have you ever had that training? I will have to go to parks on that. Yeah, Commissioner. Yeah, there. Uh, my name is Brian Gallagher. From, I'm a state forest ranger with the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Uh, Randy Simon, State Parks Commissioner. Uh, Daryl was a, a park aide. He was uh, clearing brush, flammable materials, creating the fire line. He wasn't out there fighting the fire per se, but he's creating the fire line to prep, uh, to start to delineate the line uh, to protect the communities around him. Uh, and, 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 and no matter what the job is out there, uh, these are dangerous jobs. Uh, and, and, and Daryl was uh, as committed and courageous uh, as the men and women out there on the uh, fire line today, those in the command center, uh, and, uh, and, and, we're, and truly our hearts are out to his family. And uh, I just want to thank County Exec for thank the you, uh, peer counseling services that you provided our staff, and our, our parks peer counseling services uh, were also in the car within hours uh, to meet with the teams uh, who are still dealing with this tragedy themselves. Uh, it's still under investigation, so we're looking at all the circumstances. Uh, so we don't have all the details just yet, uh, but you know, we're, we're drilling in uh, as, uh, you know, as deeply as we can on this one. All right, Danette, over here, last one.
Well, this is constantly being monitored by air surveillance. I just came from uh, the command center where they have all kinds of monitors, large screens, and uh, on, the, on the computers to identify the wind shifts, uh, the, the vulnerable communities. Many, much of this area is remote, and it's hard to access, access by, by vehicles, but also there's not homes or property there. So that's important as well to know that the larger you know, population areas are not in danger from this. But uh, Commissioner, can you talk about the weather? Brian, you want to talk about <laughs> Yeah, so right now with this particular fire that we have, we have really strong winds out of the northwest right now. So this fire is going to move to the north, uh, to the southeast, right? Uh, the co community of Tuxedo right now, we have some black fairly close to it. And that's where we have a lot of, a lot of resources right now monitoring the, to make sure that the fire is inside the control lines that we established two days ago. And they'll stay there until these high winds events dissipate, which will be tomorrow. And tomorrow, it's just a matter of continue of patrolling those same areas to make sure those communities have a presence with uh, law enforcement as well as fire resources. All right. All right. Last one, you division back here. Uh, we are just heartbroken by this, and I would ask uh, our Parks Commissioner to talk about the services that are available for the families. But obviously, first of all, uh, all kinds of counseling is available to support him. But yeah, we'll look at what our state assets are and what we're able to do in a circumstance when there's a loss of life on the job. And certainly, we'll be making sure that family is well taken care of. Again, just, just heart, just sadness. We're just filled with sadness, and uh, I look forward to speaking to the family. I've tried, but. Uh, They've been preoccupied, so. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you, everybody.